Strap yourself in. Woodwork prohibited. Not available in the state of shock. Dan Schinder here at the Bonzo Match January 2014 with Simon Wright. Simon, how are you? Hey, doing, Dan? Nice to Great. see you. Great. Nice to see you in person, finally. Thanks. Nice to see you. So you're playing the Bonzo Bash. You're not just here to observe, correct? Absolutely, yeah. I'm how, have play you done it before? I've done all of them. I think three, three of them. Did you do the East Coast? I didn't do the East Coast, okay. no, no. Okay. But I did the other ones in the uh, the West Coast. Okay, great. Yeah. The ones that matter. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, East Coast. I'm very privileged to be here amongst some brilliant players. Yeah. So you know, it's absolutely. Been great. Yeah. yeah. What's going on right now? You're doing something with Jeff Tate's Queens, right? Yes, we just finished that up actually about three days ago. We were on the West uh, East Coast in Florida, and uh, um, we did a, a bunch of shows there. And um, I'm doing that, and my other band, Dio Disciples, as well. So I'm doing that as well. That'll be in February. So just trying to keep busy, and yeah. Queen's right thing's really cool, and Great. keeping Ronnie's music alive as well. Yeah. So it's going talk really about well. that a little bit, if you don't mind. What is the process that you go through when you decide when you're putting a show together to pay tribute to Ronnie? What's the process? Well, we we already had a show that we were playing with him for a long time. So we, we kind of stick with those songs that are the standards, like Rainbow in the Dark, mm -hmm. Holy Diver, all those great songs and stuff. But we try to mix it up a little bit and put in songs that have, maybe haven't been done before or haven't been heard in a long time. So we try to make sure it's uh, interesting for, for the right. fans and stuff. And we let them know you know uh, what we're doing and they ask you know they kind of tell us what songs they'd like to hear and stuff as well so we do it that way as well right and is it only is it all ronnie's solo stuff or do you go back to rainbow and black sabbath as well we do we, we we've gone as far back as rainbow we haven't done elf yet but uh i was gonna ask you that too yeah. no we haven't done that yet that yeah. that's a little bit difficult to transpose uh yeah. but one me and craig were talking about craig goldie mm -hmm. um and we were uh, one day we'll do that and stuff that's so. awesome yeah it's I think, I think it's important for the much younger kids that might be familiar with the more popular stuff that yeah. Ronnie did to understand more about his influence and his roots. Oh, he has so many different roots out there, so many different, you know, styles and stuff. And, um, you know, not just the real dark stuff, you know, with, with, with Black Sabbath and Heaven and Hell and even, D, even Dio, but, you know, yeah. like the Elf stuff and even before that, you know, it's, it's, there's, he had such a just a brilliant voice yeah you sing anything really well anytime right and where'd all that power come from you know it had to have come from his passion for doing it it, it was he was very passionate about about how things were going to pan out and stuff and he was just a naturally brilliant gifted singer right you know that's let's, natural yeah i'm sorry it's okay let's no, talk about john bonham uh, um well. I mean, you've played in a bunch of Bonzo Bashes. Yeah. yeah. Um, how was, I mean, it's such a silly question, but I think it still bears asking. How did he influence your playing? Oh, a lot. I mean, um, you know, I, I guess I, my uh, start was around the 70s, uh, right. late 70s. Um, it was Thin Lizzy, um, Led Zeppelin that I started playing to, pl just playing to the records, and I had, like, and, and a bunch of other drummers too, but the one that caught me automatically, and I think there's probably 25, 30 other drummers will agree, you know, yeah. when you hear his sound, yeah. and it just grooves, and it fits the right. riff, and it fits the music, and it yeah. fits the soul, everything was great about that band, you had this monster drummer, right. you had a really cool bass player, this banshee of a singer, you know, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a great blues and guitar yeah. player. Who was I mean. a great composer, too. A composer, And yeah. I think yeah. was so great at writing specifically for who made up the band. Yeah, he was really aware of, like, who was in the band right. and what worked for each member of the band really right. well. But Bonzo was just like, it was such a, you know, it, um, it's been said before, but I mean, it's like, it, everybody thinks he's just a hard hit and pounder, no. you know, but it's not. The subtleties that went on underneath what he was playing on his high art work and his ghost notes on his snare yep, drum and exactly. stuff like that, the little influences on the kick drum. The flutters and, and everything, all, yeah. And, and his kick was, was, was well, apparently was, was so, the skin was so hard on the bass drum, you know, yeah. that to get those inflections on the bass drum must have been really hard on his on his legs yeah, you know but yeah. I, he was just a tough guy anyway i think it was in construction you know so yeah. um but he, he wasn't just a basher he was like a real oh, artiste and he, he really knew how to work that drum kit right so, absolutely yeah. Yeah. simon thanks so much for joining us and yeah we'll get together either in vegas or la and we'll do a, a full-on uh, episode with you an in-depth 
interview about your whole career and everything. Uh, so we'll do that. Great. Thank okay. you very much. I appreciate sure. that. Thank you. Thanks very much. All the best. Simon Wright with Cheers, Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV. Thanks very much.